very much uh, to Professor von Bogdandi, to Pro uh, Professor Peters for the opportunity to present here um, about the recent developments in, in Chile in the constitutional process. Um, I would like to speak about Chile at a critical juncture, drafting a new constitution, and in that sense, uh, looking at different aspects of uh, the process itself, elections, and the possible topics of um, the process. Um, the problem I will try to uh, use as a focus for the presentation um, is the question that many in Chile have been asking um, and actually have been waiting for, um, whether the constitutional process as the, is to be interpreted as the last element of an unfinished transition, the transition of 1989-1990 um, uh, to democracy. Um, in that sense, it would be a critical juncture in motion, you know, a, a moment in history where actually um, opportunities are open, uh, where we can leave behind um, different systems, models, structures, and also like types of behavior in a way. Uh, the concept comes from David Collier and Collier and has been applied to Chile by Baeza in 2009 for the political part of the transition, um, always reminding that the economic transition has not happened yet. Um, and in that sense, I would like to ask whether that's happening now. In that sense, also briefly putting you um, on the same um, plane uh, regarding the history of transition, especially for those uh, who don't know Chile so well, um, some remarks about the election of members of the Constitutional Convention that happened two weeks ago, um, and uh, a sketch of the main controversies that this convention has to solve in the year to come. I need a, a little time frame um, and will briefly highlight the most important points. Uh, from 1970 to 1973, Chile had a socialist, socialist government uh, under Salvador Allende. Um, a couple of years before, there were agrarian reforms that, uh, that uh, redistributed a lot of territory. Um, these were carried out by the Christian Democrats and uh, Salvador Allende was um, continuing uh, with that reform and adding uh, other reforms um, regarding uh, economy, etc. Uh, he was stopped by a coup d'etat in 73. Many of you will know that he was actually uh, forced into suicide. Um, and the military junta uh, began to, to reign with uh, severe and systematic, uh, serious human rights violations, disappearances, ex uh, arbitrary executions, torture. Um, and in that context, um, the new constitution, the 1980 constitution, was uh, debated in a 12th member commission under the leadership of Jaime Guzman, um, and finally approved by a five-member junta in 1980. Um, a couple of years uh, followed with um, a lot of legislative uh, activity where uh, basically the privatization of social services um, was carried out, water, social security, education, health. Um, that was in, at the beginning of the 80s. Um, and then from 1985 onwards, uh, opposition organized and managed to call for um, a plebiscite uh, and organize that plebiscite uh, under the um, junta as well. Um, Chileans voted against the continuity of Pinochet in power in 1988. Um, a pacted transition was um, agreed, pacted in the sense that um, the political elements um, of the constitution, of the political process would change, uh, the economic uh, elements would stay, and there were certain guarantees for Pinochet himself and his junta, so they would not be prosecuted. Um, in 1989, for our purposes, very interesting, uh, a constitutional reform was approved by a referendum that actually brought into the constitution, for example, the clause on incorporation of international human rights treaties. Uh, that was actually uh, the only reform uh, to the constitution that would, was approved by a referendum until now. In 2005, the major reforms to the political constitution were uh, reforms uh, voted upon by Congress. Uh, that was a time when um, 
Senators for Life uh, were abandoned uh, and other remnants of the dictatorship in the constitution. Um, the process finished, I would say, in 2015 with a legal reform to the electoral system um, that introduced um, a proportional system of elections um, and eliminated certain uh, kinds of privileges for certain groups uh, that happened, parties that uh, were um, in the binominal uh, system before. From 2016 to 2018, the country lived through a participatory process on the elements of a new constitution uh, called uh, by government and by parties, um, but the process was abandoned. But she led at that moment uh, was politically quite weak. She didn't get um, that process through and in the end uh, focused uh, on the reform of higher education, which she got through uh, and that finally um, benefited about 60% of the population's students um, with gratuity in universities. Um, the perception of this inequality in the country rose during all these years uh, and got more uh, vocal in, in very recent years uh, from October 2019 onwards. And you might have seen that on the news. We had three months of mass demonstrations and riots in Chile with um, serious uh, human rights violations um, by the police forces uh, against demonstrators. Um, and uh, the process um, of a new constitution started there after a month of um, demonstrations and riots. Um, there was an inter-party agreement on a constitutional process that the government then took up and converted with a congressional initiative into a law that allowed, constitutionally speaking, the new form of adopting constitutional change. Uh, before constitutional change was only possible through Congress and with this uh, agreement and the later law uh, it is now possible to have it through a constitutional convention uh, which was called for um, and which had to be approved by a, a plebiscite that uh, took place with six months of delay because of COVID in October 2020. 78% of the population were in favor of starting the process. 79% of the uh, population in favor of doing it with a specifically elected uh, body. Uh, the other option that was out there was to have 50% uh, uh, directly elected and 50% designated by Congress um, that was rejected. So we have now um, 155 seats in a convention uh, that was elected uh, two weeks ago um, on the weekend of 15th and 16th of March. Sorry, May. Um, there was still a low turnout. Um, historically, uh, historically uh, Chile had a voting obligation uh, that was removed in 2012, if I'm not wrong. Um, and we have since then a relatively low uh, turnout that was only exceptionally um, changed for the referendum of last year. There was a higher turnout. Um, now it's around 43, 44%. Um, the assembly, the convention, uh, as it is correctly named, um, is marked by high diversity. Uh, 48 members are independent, not um, affiliating or even uh, sympathizing with any political party. Um, you see in the figure here, I didn't find an English translation of this, um, where you have Lista de la Prueba. This is the old concertación that um, was the opposition under Pinochet and uh, was uh, later on put, um, basically um, running all governments uh, besides Piñera's two right-wing governments. Um, Vamos por Chile is the one, the right-wing uh, parties um, and Apruebo Dignidad is the new left, is a Frente Amplio, which is uh, similar to um, the Spanish Podemos in a way. No? Um, and if you look at the numbers and uh, how many seats they got, it's it's very surprising. Look at the uh, formerly biggest, um, pop, most populous party in Chile, the Christian Democratic Party. It got two seats. Um, 
So there is a huge uh, political and, uh, yeah, in a way, uh, institutional turmoil at mo moment. It was very surprising to have such a high number of independent parties. And we have 17 seats, and I think that's, a, a in Chile, it's a first time. Uh, in many other countries also, uh, it would be a first time. 17 uh, reserved seats for indigenous peoples. Um, the con convention uh, is also a parity convention, so 50% had to be uh, women. Um, but I think politically speaking, even if the other one is a world first, um, for the Chilean context, reserved seats for indigenous peoples is even the more surprising result. It was actually much longer debated in uh, Congress whether this would be part of the law. Um, the outcome, if you go for lists and not parties, because the parties formed lists uh, to run for the convention, uh, there is no list with a blocking minority. That would be two, uh, one third, a uh, minimum of 52 votes. Nobody has that. And um, no single list manages to get two thirds. Uh, that is uh, the majority necessary to, appre to approve a clause in the future convention. 77 members, according to Super Chile, which is um, investigative uh, journalism, um, pursue radical changes in the system, as they call it. Uh, that means uh, major changes to the political or the economic system, most of them economic. The only real change in the political system that is discussed is whether Chile has to become parliamentarian or decentralized, uh, more decentralized um, political system. And there is no list with sufficient votes to raise procedural claims to the Supreme Court on the convention's procedure by itself. Um, so uh, it's necessary to have 39 votes for that. In terms of parity, you see 78 men, 77 women. Um, that was the result after adjustments uh, that have to be made. Um, the law was uh, having two clauses that um, balanced out um, the uh, parity issue. The first one was that every list had to be led by a woman and that then a zebra system would be applied. So you would have woman, man, woman, man candidate for every list. And after that election, there would be um, this adjustment procedure that in the end benefited men more than women. So if, uh, for example, you'd have had um, quite a lot more seats for indigenous women than for men and quite couple more for uh, women than for men, but uh, basically um, the parity issue, of course, um, needs um, balancing out for both. Um, so uh, gender, and um, that was um, the, the mechanism that was chosen by the, by the Congress in the moment. Main controversies over the content of the new constitution Basically, the recognition of social rights, the current constitution does recognize some social rights, uh, doesn't make them justiciable, and does not um, reflect the full scope of social rights as they would be in the international treaties. So, uh, this is the inclusion of new rights, like the uh, right to social security or the right to housing, the right to water. There uh, is the debate about references to jurisprudence of international treaty bodies and how the treaties, human rights treaties, actually should be incorporated to avoid um, current uh, problems with that topic. Um, and finally, that is the hottest point of debate, uh, whether and to what extent social rights should be justiciable. Uh, the right-wing bloc, the Vamos por Chile, has um, put... Um, out already its opinion that it, they would oppose, um, at least uh, the official line would oppose dis justiciability, but there are certain candidates that um, would also say that they would not do so. So we have to see the majorities in the end. Um, there is a lot of discussion about changes to the economic system, mainly about the extractivist model uh, of the Chilean economy. Um, the main uh, industries are mining, logging, and fisheries, um, all non-renewables um, in the sense um, that uh, non-renewables, of course, breeze grow again, grow again, and fish grow again, um, but renewable and uh, non-renewable in the sense the regulation is at the moment. Um, people perceive it as not sustainable enough. 
um, and mining certainly is non renewable. Um, so there's a lot of calls for the diversification of the economy and a frame to the uh, extractivist model. Um, a lot of debate will be about water rights. The water is totally privatized in Chile um, and uh, not very justly distributed. Um, in that sense, translating these uh, thematic debates into law, there will be a lot of debate about the constitutional doctrine of um, a solidary economy or a, a social welfare state, as opposed to what is uh, currently the doctrine of subsidiarity. That is a concept that is not uh, reflected in the constitution itself. It's an interpretation by the constitutional tribunal um, that the state should always be the last one to compete and the, la uh, the least beneficial competitor uh, in a way uh, when um, economy is carried out, um, which makes sense in some, in some way regarding um, real economic activity or um, solely economic activity like mining uh, or gas, uh, but it does not make sense if you take, for example, that most of the uh, social services um, are um, privatized in Chile, and in these systems as well, the state is by law the least um, able competitor, um, so that uh, it can only take activity in these sectors when the privates can't take it or don't want to take it on. That means uh, that for the state, it's more expensive in a way to provide health, social security, uh, water, and so on than it would be for privates uh, because of the legal, uh, legal pro uh, provisions that we have. And that subsidiarity system applied to social services is what is, what is mainly criticized um, because the state cannot comply with this regulation um, correctly uh, with the guarantees of social rights that the international treaties um, require. And there is a huge debate about the existence and the role of the constitutional tribunal, mainly uh, regarding um, preventive control. Um, I would think it's a um, debate that comes from the practice of the uh, current constitutional tribunal, not so much from the um, set out uh, of the original constitution itself. And there is debate about an ecological constitution that's a very widespread demand. Um, recognition of in indigenous peoples is still on the list. We haven't managed to have that in our constitution despite many, many years of debate, international um, agreements and court orders. Um, the way how this is being done uh, will be the debate. Um, and uh, institutions, very briefly, uh, some debate about presidentialism, parliamentarism, uh, decentralization, the role of the central bank. Um, a majority, I think, uh, will want to maintain the independence of the central bank as it is. And the debates about an ombudsperson um, that has more um, capacities and faculties than the current National Institute of Human Rights. Um, I have two minutes left. Um, what is on from now on? Um, we have one year maximum to draft, um, then the draft will be submitted to the president. Rules of procedure have to be adopted within that time, and there's no deadline for elaboration. We all hope that we don't repeat the Bolivian uh, story of having more than 50% of the time of the convention dedicated to procedural debates. Um, there must be a secretariat, um, and constitutionalists hope that that will be actually populated by constitutional lawyers. Um, there are some lawyers, uh, constitutional lawyers in the convention and a lot of lawyers in the convention, uh, 66 of them, I think, but constitutional lawyers are not that many. Um, there needs to be a final approval by two thirds majority um, of the convention and then a referendum with obligatory voting in more or less June 2022. The convention cannot amend the current constitution. So it's a black and white exercise. Either they manage to get a text and get it approved in the referendum or the whole exercise will die. Obviously, then Congress could take up set several proposals and try to approve them through the usual congressional uh, constitutional change. I, I skipped Article 135 of the Constitution that defines the elements that the convention cannot change. It cannot change the Republican character of Chile. It cannot change um, the, rep uh, the representative democracy and it cannot change 
um, judicial orders or judicial judgments, uh, basically. And it cannot uh, change, and that's the hu- uh, biggest debate, international treaties um, that are enforced. And there's a big debate if that means that they have to comply with them or if they just cannot um, adopt any um, de-ratification or uh, the sort. And the question I will uh, uh, like to pose with us is, what chances are there for continued path dependency regarding the economic constitution? Um, how will that go on? We have a very interesting classes in the current constitution on the social function of property that have never been applied. So um, the path dependency operates not just through a text, but through a culture of uh, interpretation. Uh, and what chances are then there for something really new? Um, obviously, we could only hypothesize about that, but I would um, just finish by inviting you to, to see what's happening in Chile in the year to come. Thank you so much for your attention.